my name is Matthew Weaver. I work at The Guardian. I've been there for over 20 years now. This time last year, um, I was doing The Guardian's live blog about coronavirus, and I wrote a post about the fact that um, Cummings hadn't been seen in public for um, more than a week after getting coronavirus and running out of Downing Street. And I said, well, no one's seen him. Um, Downing Street says he's working from home and he's not in the office today. Um, and someone got in touch and said, I can tell you why he's not in work. I've just seen him in Durham. And I thought, oh, blimey, you know, that, that is, that's a story. But it took six weeks between that call and actually publishing it before we hit the world with it. So where did it come from? You, somebody on the live blog just tipped you off? That was one source. When you're doing a story as big as this, you've got to have more than one source. At the end of that week, we put it to Downing Street and they said no comment, which then made us think, well, they're going to brazen this one out, but at the same time, they're not denying it. The source who witnessed him in his yard at his parents' house with a child and heard ABBA playing in the background, that, that source then became the ABBA source, but we needed more proof. So I searched for lots of social media posts. There were loads of rumours that he was, he was there, but nothing bottomed out at all. Then I got another tip that he'd been seen on a different date on the 19th of April, looking at bluebells and at that point it became clear that the mirror was also onto the story yeah. and I thought oh, shit you know, the, you know this rivalry you know I, I want the story for myself but I couldn't get to the primary source of that the bluebell source but I knew that Pippa Creary at the mirror had better access to that source and she knew that I knew about the the other sighting so we decided to, to collaborate and from that moment it really kind of opened up we agreed quite formally to share everything we got and everything we got in the future. But even then, that second sighting was also denied by Downing Street. And then to rub salt into the wound, Cummings' wife, uh, Mary Wakefield, wrote a long piece in The Spectator implying that both she and Dominic Cummings had been in London all the time. It was an account of, of their life in lockdown. And the only reference to place was that they emerged into the madness of London at the end of it all. So deeply disingenuous. And I messaged her as well and said, look, can you just clarify where you were? Um, I got no reply. So the stonewalling continued. On the 22nd of May, Jeremy Armstrong, the, the Mirror's North East correspondent, asked Durham Police whether they knew he'd been there. And they said, yeah, you know, we've known a while. We'll get, we'll get a statement to you. We thought that they were going to run it by Downing Street. They didn't. And suddenly we had independent verification that he was there. And there was no way that Downing Street could continue stonewalling. We had two very solid sources now. And we went with the story. As soon as we both press publish at 8 p.m. on that Friday evening. It went completely nuts, and um, in the, within minutes there were calls for Cummings to resign. It really angered the, the, the public who, at that point, had been locked down for weeks and weeks and weeks, and had surprised the authorities in how much they obeyed the, the, the stay-at-home laws. Mm. And here was someone who had been pivotal in drawing up those laws, and the messaging around that, that stay-at-home message, seemingly flagrantly bre breaching the laws. Initially, Downing Street just still refused to comment. They, unbelievably, they said we hadn't had enough time to comment. The next day, they started bad-mouthing us and saying it, was, you know, it wasn't true. It wasn't quite like that. There were explanations to it. It was something about childcare. And minister after minister was coming on the telly, this was a Saturday morning, saying, look, he's, he's done what every good parent does and looked after his child and his family. Um, and, and they were asked, has he gone anywhere else? No, they said, he stayed in Durham. And at that point, I was beginning to stand up a second great part of the story, which was that he went to, he went to Barnard Castle. While they were denying he'd been anywhere, I was talking to Robin Lees, a retired chemistry teacher in Barnard Castle, who said that he'd um, seen him in, um, in Barnard Castle on the 12th of April. And better than that, he got a record of his number plate and a Google history of when he himself had looked up that number plate when he got home. So it, it was categorical proof that it was uh, his car and time when, when it had been seen. I was listening to all these ministers saying he hadn't been anywhere else. We knew he had, but I still had to sort of verify that. And he gave me this number plate and it wasn't quite the same number plate as the one that was sitting outside Cummings' house that day was being mobbed by the media. But I found a picture with Cummings and that number plate in the background. So I thought, yeah, that's bottomed that one out. And then 24 hours after we'd done the Durham story, we did the Barnard Castle story and even more hell broke out. This was, this was clearly a really awkward truth that the government didn't want out. They were stonewalling us all along and they were really squirming to justify what was unjustifiable. And then 
24 hours later, Boris Johnson was being asked in the Downing Street press conference, what about, what about Barnard Castle? And not denying it, again, not denying it, but um, this was a truth to power that was making them squirm. It felt incredibly important. I was getting all kinds of emails of, of outrage about his behaviour, but also praise that we'd, that we'd exposed this hypocrisy at the heart of government, a double standard, a really difficult truth that made the entire establishment Square. One of the things that Cummings did to defend himself was he was asked at that famous sort of Downing Street press conference in the Rose Garden, do you understand people's anger about what has happened? He just tried to blame the media and said this was, you know, he understood why people have been whipped up by this because the media have just blown it out of all proportion. This was attacking the messenger. I felt really kind of outraged by that. He, he was just trying to use that suspicion of the media to try and squirm out of it. It didn't work. Fortunately, people saw through that and that defence really backfired in a way. And all he could say that, about why he'd been to Barnard Castle was that he was testing his eyes. You know, it was ludicrous. And anger at his behaviour sort of quickly turned into scorn and ridicule. You know, I, I was head down in that story and, and, and the subsequent story about Barnard Castle that weekend. I was completely wired. I couldn't sleep for a week. I just running on adrenaline. It was really thrilling to be involved in it. And it was only when I went for a run on the, I think it was a Sunday morning, um, and I was just running on this corner here, and I just heard two guys speaking, and one said, and he went to Durham. And I thought, oh my God, they're right there talking about my story, and that's the, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. I'm sure it'll be the last time as well. You know, that was the, like the definition of cut through. And I thought, oh, I did that.